My name is Naba Ali and I am a PGY4 at Emory University. And thank you so much for allowing me to be here virtually and chat with you. Um, so I'll be presenting about radiation treatment plan evaluation um, and educational tool for radiation oncology trainees. All right, so to start with some background. Um, so as many of us know, treatment plan evaluation is a critical component of care uh, for radiation oncologists. So we expect that our residen residency training programs adequately prepare residents for this skill. However, unfortunately, many residents still feel uncomfortable when it comes to treatment planning and plan evaluation at time of transition to independent practice. So why the discomfort? So there may be a variation in the number of cases that residents are seeing. Um, so maybe they aren't reviewing enough plans. Um, there is a lack of independent plan review in some cases, meaning that they're reviewing plans often with attendings um, and don't have the opportunity to review plans, again, independently. Um, the lack of a formal plan evaluation curriculum at the majority of programs across the country. Um, so, you know, most of the time residents are learning plan evaluation in one-on-one -on -one rotations with attendings, and there isn't a formal didactics on this topic. There's also uh, little standardization amongst institutions across the country. So there's, there's no standardized plan evaluation curriculum. And then more recent challenges includes a include a rise in auto contouring, templated plan goals, as well as the virtual environment. So this limits our interactions with dosimetry, physics, as well as our own attendings. So at our institution, we decided to create an educational tool for our residents in plan evaluation. And this was created with collaboration between uh, residents, myself and another resident, uh, faculty, dosimetry, and physics. And there are three test cases that were created. They were de-identified CNS radiation treatment plans. And CNS plans were chosen to correspond to the didactic sessions that we are covering at that time. And these plans highlighted problems that could be identified in plan evaluation. So residents were asked to re review each case as well as the corresponding case questions. They were given four weeks for completion of the cases Participation was in, was voluntary. Um, and following the cases, there was a review session held by dosimetry. So seven of the 14 or 50% of our trainees completed the case review and accompanying questions. And the questions took an average of 11.9 minutes to complete. The first case was of inaccurate contours and misregistration. So this was a a patient who was receiving adjuvant radiation for a high-grade glioma. And uh, on the CT simulation scan, the optic structures were incorrectly contoured. And this was because the MRI was uh, incorrectly registered to the CT simulation scan. So what resulted was what appeared uh, that the optics were meeting their constraints um, on the DVH. However, when you looked more closely at the dose overlay, um, as well as the contours, you could see that actually they were receiving over 60 gray. So if you look on the left, the image on the left here, uh, the orange is what, what was contoured incorrectly, and the green is where the optic structures actually were. So you can see the 60 gray isodose line is overlapping. The questions corresponding to this case were focused on the CBCHOP method of plan evaluation, and trainees were asked if they would accept the plan and provide justification. So the second case was trying to identify different beam arrangements. So in this, in this case, there were two plans created for one test patient who was receiving adjuvant radiation for a low-grade glioma. So the plan on the left was created using non-coplanar arcs, while the plan on the right was created using coplanar arcs. So on the left, the plan has a little more uh, low dose spill in the superior inferior direction, while the plan on the right has more low dose spill radially. Depending on the clinical scenario, um, one beam arrangement may have been more beneficial over the other. So the questions accompanying this case were focused on the differences between the plans as well as pros and cons of each beam arrangement. 
The final case was testing it, adequate target coverage or being able to identify adequate target coverage. So again, there were two plans made for one case of a patient receiving adjuvant uh, treatment for a high-grade glioma. So in this case, the target volume, the target was uh, receiving 60 gray, uh, and it was very close to the optic structures, which had a constraint of 54 gray. Um, and of course, that made it very difficult to have adequate target coverage. So in one plan, the 93% of the volume of the PTV was receiving 100% of the prescription dose, and the optic constraints were being met. In the second plan, 96% of the volume of the PTV was receiving 100% of the prescription dose, and still the optic constraints were met. And this was done because dosimetry was able to use a PTV optimization structure um, to basically provide um, extra coverage to the PTV. So uh, trainees were asked which plan they would approve and then any techniques they could recommend to dosimetry to improve the inferior plan. Following the cases, there was an interactive session that was held with dosimetry uh, to review concepts that was one hour long. And then residents were given a survey uh, regarding their experience uh, and all participants indicated that the cases and review session improved their confidence and understanding of plan evaluation and that they would like to see more similar educational material incorporated into their future training. So this was a single institution experience of a new educational tool for plan evaluation. Um, and we, it was well received uh, by our trainees and had required a minimal time commitment of only 11.9 minutes. And we feel that it fulfills an unmet need to improve pl the plan evaluation curriculum. So going forward, we'd like to create a case library. Um, so this can kind of correspond to our didactic curriculum so that we have a more standardized and formalized plan evaluation curriculum for residents. We'd also like to increase training participation. So in our initial experience, we had about 50% training participation, and we attribute that to many residents being on vacation or perceiving that the cases would take a long time to complete. Um, so going forward, we're hoping that we'll have uh, additional participation. We'd also like to see long-term data regarding trainee comfort in practice with plan evaluation after uh, continuing this curriculum. And then ultimately we'd like to expand this to other institutions as well. So here are my references and my acknowledgements. And I'd like to especially thank Dr. Ashley Schlafstein who is one of my co-residents who worked on this project with me. And thank you all for your time and please let me know if you have any questions.